Hi there and welcome, it's Jennifer. I hope you're having a great day. Today I wanted to show you how to use your die cuts to create a gift card holder on the front of a card. I know with the holidays coming up, I like to give gift cards to teachers and folks at the schools and such. And this is just a great way to present it, something a little bit different. And I'll give some tips along the way for doing it with whatever die cuts you may have. Okay, so first let's go ahead and start doing our die cutting. I'm using this new die cut set from My Favorite Things. It cuts all of these pieces and it's so much fun to kind of build these up to create the perfect little cups of hot cocoa or coffee. Now I'm just going to cut them out from white first so I can do some planning. I do this a lot. I cut just from plain white cardstock, plan what I want to do with it, and then I can use other colors of cardstock or I can just color the pieces I have with markers or ink. I also like to keep a little bowl on hand to put all the tiny pieces in because I don't want to lose them along the way. So after I kind of laid things out and planned things a bit, now it's time to go and die cut some from some other colors of cardstock. I did the cups from some pool colored cardstock and the hot cocoa in the inside from some craft cardstock. And I also die cut a white square with a faux piercing around the inside edge. Now you could just cut a white square or you could skip this entirely and create your little gift card holder out of the cups alone, the little hot cocoa cups alone. But I needed a place for sentiment so I thought this would be helpful. You could also just cut it with a trimmer. Now whenever I die cut from plain cardstock, I always go in with an ink blending tool and my Distress Ink and I add a little bit of shading to the outside edges of the die cut. This really makes a big difference in making the die cut pop and have the look of dimension. Now I use a very light hand when I'm doing this, just a little bit of ink around the outside edge with a color that somewhat matches the cardstock that I'm using. So you could use other inks, you could use other inking tools. I just find that this works really well. Now I wanted to have a little shading under the lip of the mug. So from one of those extra white die cuts, I cut the top of the mug out. I'm just gonna hold it there as a mask so that I can put a little bit of ink underneath the lip. This takes just a few moments and it really makes a big difference in kind of defining the edges of this die cut. You could also stamp on these little mugs if you wanted to. I also added a little bit of red ink around the edges of the hearts that I cut from the same die set and then also to the coffee that's going to sit inside or the cocoa that's going to sit inside of our little mugs. So adding that ink to all of the pieces really makes a big difference and it doesn't take long at all. Now for the whipped cream on top, it's hard to see this in the video, but whenever I want to add a little bit of shading to white, I prefer to go in with a Copic marker and do this. Even if you aren't into Copics, you could get a super light gray Copic just for this purpose. This is C00. I also like C0. I just couldn't find it today. And I just go in and add some of this to the outside edge and anywhere I want some shading. And it really makes a big difference. It's hard to see in the video because of the lighting. I apologize for that but it makes a big difference in adding that look of shading. I have a hard time being so light-handed enough with a Distress Ink to not color my white die cut too much. So I find that using that super light gray Copic really is helpful. So now I can glue all these pieces together. I decided to add the hearts with a little bit of dimensional adhesive. You'll notice here that the hearts are plain. I end up going back and, cha uh, going back and changing this later on in the video, you'll see that. But I'm gonna leave it at this point here and start to work on our background. Now the background I also played around with quite a bit. I was unsure where to go with it. This is what I decided and I'll show you some other options at the end of this video. But I decided to use a piece of Hero Arts craft cardstock. I love this cardstock in a uh, We Are Memory Keepers next level embossing folder. Now these embossing folders are bar by far the best I've ever used because instead of just raised areas and lowered areas, it has everything in between. So you get these smooth transitions in an incredible, beautiful dimension. And here's another tip for any background that you have where you've used an embossing folder. I like to take some white pigment ink and an inking tool and very lightly rub it along the raised areas of the background. This adds like a highlight to those raised areas and really kind of accentuates the difference between the raised areas and the lowered areas. It just makes the background look even more intense. So now we can put the card together. I'm taking that square piece that I die cut earlier and cutting the top off of it just because it didn't need to be as tall. I did stamp a sentiment on that and I'll show you that stamp set later in the video. So now I'm kind of arranging my pieces on the front of this white square. I also put a good amount of adhesive on the back of our embossed background just to make sure it sticks well. And I'm going to put that onto a top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. 
Now it's time to create our little pocket for our gift card. I have some foam tape here and I'm going to cut it into thin long strips. Now I have a gift card. This is an old Starbucks gift card. It's expired, but I just use it as a holding place when I create cards like this. So I'm going to hold it exactly where I want it to be in behind my die cuts. And I'm going to put some foam tape right along the bottom and along the two sides, just holding the gift card there so I know exactly where to put the tape. I tend to leave a little wiggle room to the sides of that, of that gift card, just so it can wiggle around a little bit, but you couldn't put it in there snug if you wanted to. You could put the foam tape right up against the sides. Now keep in mind, I have that white square that's a perfect kind of spot to create this pocket, but you could create any large kind of um, arrangement of die cuts and create a pocket behind that. This is a great way to kind of make those gift cards that you give people a little extra special. There are also some dies available that create little pockets for gift cards or little notches to hold gift cards, and those can be really fun too. Now, I plan to give this card to my mail lady. I thought that would be something fun to give her and part of the Share Handmade Kindness Challenge that I've been doing on my blog. This week is about giving cards to folks who serve in our community or work in our community, so I think it's a great way to show some appreciation. Okay, so I took the release paper off the back of our little pieces of foam tape, and now I'm just adding this towards the bottom of the card, and I have a perfect pocket to add a gift card. Before I show you some of the other options I considered along the way, I wanted to show you how I finished this card off. There were these little tiny marshmallows included in that die cut set. So I'm adding them. They just were cut with white cardstock and I'm using some multimedia matte adhesive to add them. And then I covered those little marshmallows with distress stickles. I think this is one of the best products for just creating uh, the look. It looks like sugar. It dries um, very dry. So it looks like just crumbled up sugar, not with any gloss around it. And it's perfect for things like this. So I put that on pretty heavy and then I let it dry. It was at this point that I decided those hearts were a little bit too plain for me. So I grabbed a snowflake stamp set from My Favorite Things and I just took one large snowflake there and I'm stamping it with red ink just centered up on those hearts. Now I could have die cut these from some patterned paper or something, but I didn't want to have to go back and die cut anymore and just stamping this tone on tone in the center was all that we needed to finish that off. I also added some clear Wink of Stella shimmer to the hearts. You'll notice here that I went off of the heart onto the cup by accident, and I am not about to start this card over. All I did was take a craft knife and gently scratch that color off of that pool mug, and nobody will ever know, I promise. You'll see in the pictures, you don't even notice it. Now this is the stamp set that I used to stamp that sentiment warm wishes. It's an adorable snowman set from My Favorite Things. However, this is another stamp set that My Favorite Things just came out with and it goes with that die set. I just ordered this and I don't have it yet so I couldn't include it on the card, but I did want to show you because it's a perfect fit. These sentiments are really fun. Now before we go, I wanted to show you a couple different options that I considered when making this card. I had a hard time kind of deciding what to do on this card, so I'm just going to show you some of the other options that I uh, had considered. That embossing folder that I used on the card with the craft cardstock. I also used that embossing folder on some silver foil cardstock and some gold foil cardstock. These look absolutely amazing with these embossing folders. Check that out. It looks like an embossed metal. I decided not to use them because they were a little too strong of a background for the card that I was creating, but I wanted to show them to you and I'll definitely be using them on future cards. So something worth trying. Get out those specialty card stocks that you may have and use those with your embossing folders. Okay, so that wraps up this card. If you are interested in the supplies I use, I link the main ones in my YouTube description below. Or you can click up here on the top left to head over to my blog with much more information and a giveaway. You can click the subscribe button to go over and subscribe to my blog if you want to see more videos. And then those three videos in the center there will take you over to some more ideas. The first one is for gift card holders and the other two use the same embossing folders. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day.